It is now my honor to introduce the Honorable Jason Nixon, Minister of the Environment and Parks and Government House Leader. Jason Nixon was elected to the Legislative Assembly of Alberta, representing the constituency of Rimby Rocky Mountain House Sundry on May 5th, 2015, and again on April 16th, 2019. On April 30th, 2019, he was sworn in as Minister of the Environment and Parks and was assigned the position of Government House Leader. He previously served as an official opposition House Leader. Mr. Nixon has also served as a member of the Special Standing Committee on Member Services, the Standing Committee on Privileges and Elections, Standing Orders and Printing, the Standing Committee on Legislative Offices, and the Select Special Ethics and Accountability Committee. Prior to serving with the Legislative Assembly, Mr. Nixon's employment experience largely centered on supporting the Mustard Seed, a Christian not-for-profit organization. Over the course of the 25 years with which, in which he was involved with this charitable uh, organization, he served in many roles, including as Executive Director, a position he held between 2006 and 2011. More recently, and while furthering his studies, Mr. Nixon was elected President of the Athabasca University Students' Union, a position he held between April 2014 and May 2015. Previous to this, he served as that organization's Vice President of Finance and Administration from April 2012 to April 2014. Mr. Nixon's additional employment experience includes working uh, in management for health and safety consulting firms and in business for the oil and gas industry. He holds a diploma in business administration management from SAIT and a National Construction Safety Officer designation from the Alberta Construction Safety Association. Mr. Nixon lives just west of Sundry with his wife, Tiffany, and his three children. We're very pleased and grateful that you would take the time out of your busy schedule to be here today, Mr. Nixon. Well, thanks for the introduction, first of all. I forgot some of that, so that's, that's helpful. And I do want to start off, uh, Dr. Sharbala, by uh, making it clear, uh, I am not a vegan. I'm from uh, the great town of Sundry, the, the crown jewel of the Cowboy Trail, as we like to call it up there. And we, we don't have a lot of vegans in Sundry, and we don't have Twitter either. We're pretty happy about that. Um, <laughs> I do. I also see my friend, the former MLA, uh, Jason Hale, in the back there, and I didn't see him while you were presenting. I just want to check with everybody who was at the table back there. Did he put up his hand when we about whether or not he was eaten beyond meat or not? He's blushing. Did he? That's good. I don't want your credibility back home to be completely wrecked. That's good to see you there. Um, I see a few other colleagues are here today. I just want to thank them uh, for being here. First of all, uh, MP Martin Shields. Uh, always a pleasure to see you out and about advocating for our industry and doing your important work as a member of parliament. I also have not seen you in a while since our prime minister decided to grow a beard. And I have to say I'm quite disappointed that he keeps getting coverage for his new beard and nobody has covered the greatest mustache in all of politics right there, Martin. It's, uh, as well as my colleague Lauren Dack, who uh, is an NDP MLA for Edmonton, but also the opposition critic for agriculture, I believe, doing a great job representing and holding the government to account on agriculture. Thank you for coming down from Edmonton. Uh, along with him is my colleague on our side of the aisle, the MLA uh, for Lethbridge East, this great city that we're in today, now the third largest city in the province. I know that because he keeps reminding me of that all the time. Uh, Nathan Newdorf, who's doing an incredible job. Stand up, Nathan, representing his town. Um, He's had, he's had about, a, I think, about a half a dozen cabinet ministers through here in the last 48 hours. I can tell you without a doubt, every time Nathan speaks in caucus or anywhere he goes, he's fighting really, really hard for this town that he represents. He's doing a good job. And before I make my comments, I'm actually going to give him a minute here if he just wants to come up and welcome everybody to his hometown. Thanks, uh, thanks very much, for all of you, for attending. Uh, thanks, the minister, for coming down. Obviously, uh, agriculture, food processing, and the irrigation is incredibly important to our, our region and our district and this city. Uh, it's one of the things that I have learned uh, even more so that uh, access to water it makes all the difference, uh, as we've seen the last few years. Particularly moving forward, uh, just the fact that this region has set the economic growth uh, for the entire province for two or three years, and we still look to lead that trend going in the future. Uh, the minister... Uh, when he's contending with things like uh, little mines up north that take a lot of attention 
provincially and federally for him to make time to come down and uh, recognize the significance of agriculture for, for Alberta. Uh, I really appreciate his time and the work that he does to, to make sure that you also recognize how important that is to our province. So thank you, Minister. I, uh, I'm going to be fairly fast in my remarks to leave some time at the end to uh, open up for questions. That way we can talk about what you want to talk about while I am here today. Uh, you may notice I'm limping around. I think I probably have to address that. Yesterday I was uh, on the Pecani Nation all day, uh, working with our partners uh, with the Pecani Nation, who are a major partner in our irrigation projects down here, as many of you would know. We have uh, major infrastructure with Alberta environment that is on the Pecani Nation that impacts irrigation uh, as you head south. And we, uh, we spent the day there with environment officials uh, working on a project that we need to get built on Pecani Nation. We had some good talk, uh, talks, uh, but I was, uh, I was traveling. Actually, I should back up. One of the things is when you become a cabinet minister, you get a chief of staff, my chief of staff, who's going to be mad at me, and I got to be in the car with her for the rest of the day, so this may be risky, but she'll be mad at me for drawing attention to her, but I'm going to do it anyway, because her job, when my wife sends me up to Edmonton, because after 20 years of marriage, I'm basically helpless, she tells me, is to make sure I don't make any mistakes. And we were uh, touring around uh, the riverbed yesterday, and I managed to put my leg into a hole that went up to my knee and twist basically my entire leg. And the bigger you are, the harder you fall. And as you can tell, I'm a very big guy. For the record, make sure I don't fall on you. And I wrecked my leg uh, pretty good, and then I made it to Lethbridge finally last night. I stayed at my good friends, the Zilkies. I see Dale Zilke is here. And Dale Zilke managed to ice me up as much as he could over the last 12 hours. And they have me standing up, and we'll see how long I last. So that's uh, why I'm limping like that. Please don't hold it against me. I'm six foot eight, so you can't anyway. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm pleased to be here, of course, in Lethbridge today to bring greetings on behalf of the government of Alberta and on behalf of the Honorable Jason Kenney, the Premier of our great province. Uh, as the Minister of Environment and Parks, I'm honored to recognize the hard work that each and every one of you do for Alberta's irrigation industry. In a highly industrialized country like Canada, the availability and the management of water is not always top of mind. Though I do know many of you in this room, and it is certainly top of mind for you. The only thing when you come and visit me in Edmonton, or I come and visit you at the, in the places that you come from, uh, that you talk to me more about than water is zebra mussels. That's the only thing that I can usually get you going on more. But you're very passionate about this issue, and you recognize this issue. But it's not top of mind always to Albertans. Irrigation is the most significant form of water use in the province of Alberta. And Alberta's irrigation districts have been stewards of Alberta's water resources for more than 100 years. Alberta's irrigation districts deliver water to more than 100 million acres of land, 50 rural communities, to industries, wetlands, and other critical wildlife habitat across this province. The association's work has allowed for the agriculture industry to increase food production and has supported economic and rural community development, all while focusing on environmental stewardship. Alberta's long-standing water allocation and management system has served this province well. It provides clarity around the entitlements of license holders during times of scarce, scarcity and plans ahead for flood and drought mitigation. The work and collaboration of the Alberta Irrigation District Association plays a large role in strengthening Alberta's water management system, helping us adapt to changing climate, water and supply and demand conditions. I commend you for the work that you do and for the innovative and thoughtful way that you do it. Thanks to the leadership and collaboration of the AD, AIDA, long-term flood and drought reduction initiatives are improving the health of our provincial watersheds. Alberta Environment and Parks has a long history of collaborating with the AIDA on these initiatives. Through the Watershed Resilience Restoration Program, irrigation districts work to mitigate the effects of future flood and drought events. These projects will help protect wetlands, restore critical habitat, develop regional stormwater management plans, and preserve key components of Alberta's watersheds. Alberta's irrigation districts are also essential partners of municipal flood and drought resilience. Your collaboration on these projects helps keep families, property, and infrastructure safe. The IDA has also been a leader in increasing awareness of harmful impacts that aquatic invasive species pose to Alberta's well-being, including Alberta's irrigation structure. As you all know, 
Once aquatic invasive species are brought into Alberta's water, they are very, very difficult to eradicate. That is why prevention is essential. I'm very grateful for the long-term support and financial contribution that the AIDA and individual irrigation districts have made in preventing the introduction of aquatic invasive species in this province. This includes the canine program, which I also like taking pictures with, monitoring in southern Alberta reservoirs, and our newest plan to explore the potential for potash as a control agent for invasive mussels. Our government is committed to continuing to be working partners uh, committed to working with our partners such as the AIDA on prevention, detection and planning when it comes to aquatic invasive species. I want to thank you all for that. Thank you for that relationship. Thank you again for all that you do to strengthen cooperative relationships that help us adapt to things like changing climate, water supply, demand conditions and public needs. I look forward to continue that con partnership continuing and to ensuring Alberta's water supply remains clean, safe and abundant both now and for future generations. And with that, I'd be happy to do a little Q&A, and if you don't have any questions, that's fine with me too. Uh, actually, I'll invite Nathan to come up. I'm happy to take him on anything environment related or irrigation related, but we're also happy to take any questions on anything government related while we're here, if you would like it. I'm looking for instructions. There's a bunch of people pointing all over the place, so. Um, we can sit if you'd like us to. I'm uh, to totally comfortable either way. What do you want to do, Nathan? Yeah, we could probably stand. Guys? Yeah. yeah. I just want to point out that we have uh, two microphones, so please feel free to step up to the microphones and uh, and uh, okay. with your questions. There we go. Ooh, whoa. Minister Nixon, John Colk. Hey, John, good to see you again. You bet. Uh, we, uh, we know the government's got some pretty hard work to do in terms of, of maintaining budgets and, and uh, trying to get things in fiscal balance. Um, certainly in the irrigation areas, the need to be continuing to invest in what I would call infrastructure becomes more and more important. And I understand you've got to make the cuts happen but the returns that are potential for Alberta's economy and, and potential jobs in the future are so important. How can we help you move down that road uh, in the irrigation districts uh, and the irrigation area here uh, to, to, get, to get the story out, but also to actually get some results over time? Well, for, for, I think it's a great question. I, I'm going to start with your last point first. I think. Uh, we really depend on you to get the story out. Uh, you know, when uh, I became Minister of Environment and I found out how many dams I was responsible for and you're responsible for the irrigation system and, uh, you know, a lot of people that aren't involved in that world don't understand that world, first of all. Uh, and then second, don't understand the impact that it has on our provincial GDP and our, on uh, the country as a whole. So you helping us get the story out of the benefit of irrigation to the province of Alberta, the benefit of it to your industry and why it's an essential component of our province. I mean, something that's been taking place for over a century inside this province. It's, it's important. I recognize that. Our government recognizes that. But we need your help to get that story out. So I think that's a, a big responsibility on your end that we're happy to help with, but we're depending on you uh, to do that. Second, I think it's already what you're doing. I mean, all, many of your districts have come and visited with me. They've shown me the plans that they need, where the aging infrastructure is, the components so that we have to start to talk about, uh, the planning that needs to happen long term, well beyond the time that I'll be here and, quite frankly, the time that some of you will be involved so that that conversation stays fresh uh, and is there. The reality is, you're right, we have a fiscal situation that we have to manage our way through, but we have to recognize the investment in irrigation and what the benefit it is overall, both to the government, to the taxpayer, uh, and, and of course to the people that uh, benefit on their farms and in their agriculture businesses because of irrigation. I think also what's evolving in that is the overall flood mitigation question as we address things like climate change and, and the components that are taking place, uh, on, particularly on the flood side. We are going to continue to receive pressure to put in um, flood mitigation systems inside the province to be able to manage that issue, which is an important issue. But we want to continue to branch, I want to continue to make sure the conversation then branches to see where the partnership could be for using the water in a, in a beneficial, beneficial way. Because the reality is flood is important and we should be, we want to deal with, you know, the 2013 uh, uh, floods 
had devastating effects on communities. Uh, and we want to address that, but drought is actually the more the thing that we see the most inside this province anyway. So as we go to invest, in some cases, billions of dollars inside these uh, projects, we may as well be trying to address both of those issues at once. So I don't know if I fully answer your question, but I think what you're doing is the right thing. Keep bringing it to us, keep having those conversations, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep moving forward and trying to make sure the world knows how important this is. I don't know if you want to add to that, Nathan. Yeah, just very quickly uh, about the flood mitigation. We have stru recently struck a caucus on flood mitigation and uh, potential future irrigation. Uh, I've requested to be part of that caucus. Uh, most of the rural MLAs south of Calgary and even quite a number within Calgary are on that caucus to discuss both those issues uh, for the future. Yeah. Good morning, Minister and Nixon. My name is Mike Wind. And Hi, Mike. Good, good to see you again. Um, I'm, I'm a potato grower. I'm, a, I'm actually we grow all kinds of crops. Potatoes is one of the main industries, and, and uh, I get to travel for that industry all over North America. And it is, you know, it is well known that southern Alberta is, is the next up-and-coming place where the industry is going to grow, and mainly because of irrigation. So I just want to share with you the importance of what irrigation is doing across North America. And uh, fresh water, in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of many, is the next, the oil of, of the, of probably of the world. And so the, uh, and we understand, you know, as, as funding is being decreased for, uh, for our, our projects uh, because of uh, restraints and, and finances. But I guess I really wanted to share with you the importance of what's happening in the future. Uh, these companies, these large corporations uh, uh, in the French fry industry are looking to expand. They're looking 10 and 20 years ahead. Of that. That's an area we, we really need to continue to grow in. And, I know there's uh, you know, more than irrigation, the infrastructure, highways and railroads and all that kind of stuff. So um, the importance of that industry, as it, the, the speaker before you talked about uh, vegetables, uh, potatoes is probably one of the fastest growing uh, parts of that industry in the fast food, uh, fast food industry. So keep that in mind, and uh, I think you'll hear a lot more about that in the next uh, probably five to six years. Well, I have no doubt we'll hear a lot more about it. We already hear lots about it. I, I want to assure you again that we, we understand the importance of irrigation. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, I think you guys have done a good job of educating the new government on that. Uh, and we'll continue to be bullish on it. The infrastructure projects that we're talking about are big. And so, you know, the reality is we may be in a spot where we have to go through some fiscal constraint for the next year or two as we, we adjust things. But this is a longer term vision when it comes to irrigation. And we have to make sure that we're moving forward on that. We haven't stopped doing the, the work that we have done on determining other locations where we can put in infrastructure uh, that can help a project starting to do the preliminary work. So that way when the time comes that we are in a financial spot that we can capitalize on these projects, we're ready to go. We're not uh, starting uh, from fresh. And the government has been investing already significantly in some infrastructure uh, projects. I mean, I was down at Pasano not too uh, long ago opening up the new spillway. Uh, there are things that are moving forward on it. We haven't lost sight of that. We understand the, the GDP potential uh, and we'll, uh, we'll do what we can to, to partner with you guys going forward to make sure we can continue to, uh, to provide water uh, for the benefit of all, all Albertans uh, in our economy going forward. Nathan, you want to add anything? Okay. Uh, Minister Nixon, Lauren Hickey. I was just wondering, uh, in the SMRD works, we uh, have an agreement with the state of Montana and negotiations have been kind of silent, I guess, to what we know now. Uh, are they continuing on and are they progressing in any form? We need that uh, valuable source of water, so just wondering where they were at. So you stumped me on this one, which is rare. Uh, we do have several uh, negotiations going on at several, like, in different angles. I'm looking at my chief of staff in the back. I already see her writing it down. Uh, we'll follow up with the department shortly after we leave here and we'll see if we can get a little update on what, where, where that's at. Um, and I'll even try to grab your information on the way out. We'll swing back and be able to answer that question for you if that works for you. Thank you. You bet. Oh, Nathan knows who you are. You got his number? I have his number. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks for coming down, Minister Nixon. Thanks. And uh, you alluded to this a little bit in your speech, but the muscle yeah. um, issue and the importance of trying to keep it out of Alberta. Uh, we're rat-free. Let's stay muscle-free, too. Yeah, so we need, to, we need to be all in on trying to prevent muscles. And I want to be clear on that. My, my concern, though, is I was first started to be briefed on this as minister, and understanding the economic consequences of the mussels, particularly within irrigation systems, and there's, of course, the environmental consequences of them within our waterways. 
um, you start to recognize that in some ways we, we may lose. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to win, but I also want to make sure that we're starting to take steps to be ready in case it does happen. I don't want to see the government in a position that we're now reacting to it when it happens and then we're years behind. So we're going to continue to do, uh, you know, the measures that we have in place to try to prevent at all costs muscles coming uh, within our system. The dog program, I think, is, has been working well. I know you have partnered with us on that. Uh, but I've also instructed the department to begin some work to say, what do we do if it does happen? Uh, so that we're not in a spot where we're, we're planning three years on chemical solutions and different options. And so I'm excited about that. I, I talked with uh, Minister Duncan, who's the Minister of Environment in Saskatchewan, about this at length, because uh, we need to partner with them on this issue. Uh, we're, uh, they're, they're, in some ways, they're our front line for the biggest risk coming from the Manitoba side at the moment. And so together we're working on a potash potential options. We're looking at other ways where we can get certification on certain chemical solutions in advance. So that way we're not in a spot where we're spending three years working on it. So ideally, hopefully we can remain zebra mussel free just like we're rat free, but also that we're in a spot that we can react as quickly as possible to mitigate uh, the damage and the consequences of that. So I hear you loud and clear on the seriousness of it. Uh, I know some of you were by to, to meet me my first couple of weeks as minister with a couple of example pipes with zebra mussels kept all over it. And I, I made you leave it there until the next time you came up so I could show the premier. And we, uh, we, we, you have delivered the message of the potential risk of zebra mussels and the consequences that will come to the province. And we'll continue to do the best that we can uh, to prevent that from happening. Hello, um, I'm Gary Franz, uh, chair of St. Mary's River Irrigation District. Uh, also co-chair of um, the Regional Drainage Plan uh, Committee, which uh, basically stretched from Raymond all the way down to Medicine Hat, and all the municipalities involved uh, are partnering in that to, to uh, look at drainage spillways and, and uh, uh, issues that we've had in the past and trying to rectify those. Um, the project we currently have is the uh, Horsefly Spillway uh, by Tabor. Yeah. Um, we'd uh, like to thank the, the province for uh, some, some grant money there that we've received to, to start on that project. Um, some matching funds from the federal side. And then um, we're trying to get municipalities to, to work about, uh, we're right around that 25% or so that we would have to come up with. Um, the municipalities are struggling right now, you know, with uh, like with all all the different uh, pressures they have. Um, some of that bridge funding and stuff that went away, and and that. And um, I just like to make uh, you aware of the project and and to see if we could maybe narrow that margin up on the on the 25 percent. If there's some extra funding that we could uh, have come that way to uh, to that project and uh, narrow that up so that we can move ahead with a big project in uh, this province. It's been a long time since we've seen a big project. This one is uh, designed, shovel ready, engineered, ready to go. So um, we just need a little more help with it. Message received, good job. Uh, I am aware of the project, have been uh, briefed on it. I obviously am not in a position to be making funding announcements up here today. Uh, sorry to disappoint, but uh, I will, uh, again, I'm just looking over at Pam right now. She's going to connect with you on the way out. We'll get you connected with the right person with our department, and we can uh, have a conversation about where we're at on the funding side of it and see, uh, see if there's some avenues where we can see about making it move forward. Uh, and I also want to recognize we talk a lot about the, uh, the district partnerships with, the, with AEP, but there certainly is municipal partnerships when it comes to irrigation, uh, and, and we recognize that and see, see the importance of those partnerships going forward to be able to make sure this works for our communities. Good morning, men. Welcome to Lethbridge. Thank you. Um, the, I'm just wanting to share another good news story with you about irrigation. This summer, there we had a little party at our house because we're associated with... Um, there's a company that grows hundreds of thousands of acres of malt barley around in North America, and they've been taking a very hard look at the irrigation areas of southern Alberta. So they've been growing their brand of malt barley here for the last three years in very small locations around. They, and being in the right place at the right time, one of these locations is on our farm. And so they said, we'd like to have a little party here this summer just to recognize the growers that we have. And a couple of weeks later, about a week before the party, he said, oh, by the way, the president of our company is going to be here. They didn't just bring the president of the company, they brought everybody associated with their whole growing operation for malt barley. They brought uh, all the agronomists, they brought all the people that are in charge of their facilities where they store the malt barley 
they even brought the guy that buys the aluminum that makes the cans. And uh, he gave a very passionate talk about their product, a wonderful beverage that I believe most everybody in this room enjoys. <laughs> he, uh, they mentioned their desire to move more of their operation to southern Alberta because of the ready supply and the secure supply of irrigation water. And this is something that as they've looked around North America has become very important for them. I know that they even sampled water and had the water from our irrigation canals analyzed to know what was in the water, which it comes from snow 50 miles west of here. Right. It's a wonderful product that we are able to utilize on our farm because of, and with your support, the system is in place. And that was a very large determining factor for them. And what their future plans are, um, they're, well, the sky is the limit. Yeah. And so thank you for your support and your continued recognition of the importance of irrigation water. Well said. Thanks for that story. Appreciate that. They gave me the card that says, I don't know what happens if I ignore it, but told me that we're, we're almost done. I, uh, so I don't, I don't want Nathan to get the hook. I just want to say, uh, and I'll turn it over to you. You can close it. Before I do that, though, uh, we uh, again, I want to thank everybody for what they're doing. Often we lose. Uh, you know, we're very focused on jobs, the economy, uh, as our province needs to be right now. But it's important that we also keep telling the story that there's other components of that besides our biggest industry. And, and your government does recognize that. Uh, and irrigation is a great, uh, a great part of that story, as well. Of course, the agriculture industry that we depend on to keep this province going. And for me, when I was at Basano not too long ago announcing that spillway, and you look at all those pictures from all those decades ago of the people that had the foresight to be able to go and put in infrastructure like that, to be able to create something that has had so much benefit for so many people, not just economic and agriculture, but to get people clean water. Uh, that shows that really we have, that's the responsibility we have now. While we have to manage through economic situations at the moment, we also need to be putting together a plan to make sure that when, we, that when they're announcing stuff 100 years from now and they're looking at all of us in those pictures, they go, those guys had the foresight to be able to make sure we got this right. So I assure you that's how we're looking at it. I want to thank you again for your time and having us here in Lethbridge, and I'll let Lethbridge MLA close it off. I uh, just want to go back to that last speaker and uh, congratulate the SMRID, LNID. I know they've done a, an incredible amount of work over the last few years in terms of pivots and efficiencies and, and w just the water usage efficiencies. I think it's north of 20% they've increased the efficiency or something like that. I'm sure you guys can correct me. I have had uh, some meetings with them. Uh, the Old Man Watershed Council here, they've taken me out on a, a tour uh, a number of times to different places. The work that they've done on protecting the headwaters, uh, working with farmers and uh, agricultural users uh, to make sure that we are... Uh, taking care of that resource right from uh, ground zero in the mountains. Uh, I think th that technological innovation, that uh, scientific uh, basis that you guys are at the forefront of allows us to do the most with the least cost and with the least negative ramifications. That is what I really want to celebrate uh, today. That's what I want to make sure the minister is aware of is that when there are restrictions to funding and, and capital projects, even if we can have a plan for that, reusing the resources as effectively and efficiently as possible like you are doing, setting that leadership trend for not just the province but for the, the entire nation, garnering uh, international uh, recognition for that. Uh, I want to make sure that you are very well aware of how important that work is to our government. Thank you again to the Minister uh, for coming down, spending his precious time to also acknowledge the work that you've done. And for all of you to come out here uh, and, and take time away from your, your farms and, and your livelihoods to, to hear us talk and to ask questions, thank you very much for having us.